The Red Dirt D&D Podcast is brought to you by Pro Laser Cuts. The Oklahoma company provides pre-made and customizable design laser cut dice towers, tokens, and more developed by a gamer for gamers and now available to enhance your tabletop game. Pro Laser Cuts products can be found at many Oklahoma City area game stores, local events, and now available online at ProLaserCuts.com. That's laser and cuts with a Z, Pro Laser Cuts. And by SD Way Gaming, where dice goblins unite. Our friends at SD Way Gaming celebrate the beautiful dice players handpick for their games and splendor. SD Way Gaming has expanded to include many tabletop gaming varieties, accessories, and similar fun necessities to include a service for your dice addiction. You can shop for a variety of products at sdwaygaming.com or find SD Way Gaming on Facebook. Welcome to Red Dirt d and I'm Michael Cross, and I play Gaz, an orc barbarian, sworn protector of the Caliban frontier. I'm Connor Schnold. I play Connor with a K, kobold sorcerer who is a continuous thorn in the Empire's side. I'm Johnny Payne, and I play Zonimus Dinar, a paladin of dusk, using vengeance as a tool to protect the ones I love. I'm Kiri Hester. I play Poppy Tea Leaf. The halfling desert druid determined to save the wild places from the ambitions of civilization. I'm Brooke Bullock and I play Mokrin Stoneshaper, a young dwarf sorcerer finding his true family as revealed by the secrets of the frontier. And I'm Ash King, your dungeon master. Join us now for Tales from the Kalban Frontier. As the frontier whizzes by beneath you, all of you currently no more than wisps on the wind, the journey from the pillars to the home of Jasper Smithson takes what feels like absolutely no time at all. And before long, you all stand once more in front of the rock face that serves as Jasper Smithson's home. Anybody around? Give me a perception check. Um, I assume it's daytime. It is daytime. Okay. I got a. Well, no one's here. Nineteen. <laughs> Nat one for eleven. A <laughs> eleven also. So Gaz, you actually notice not too far away, grazing happily, a Pegasus. There's a Pegasus over there. <gasps> oh. Whirlwind, is that you? <sighs> Yompix is here. I really hope he is, and it's not a message. So, Jasper's house is inside the canyon, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Hey, Whirlwind, can Buttercup and Thistle come hang out with you? I think that means yes. Buttercup and Thistle, you go stay with your friend Whirlwind. I'm sure you guys have lots of things to catch up on. You've seen dragons now. Cal can come too, right? <laughs> Cal, go make a new friend. Be nice. Whirlwind is very intelligent. Do all those wings intimidate you? We gotta go say hi. Huh, Yelpix is here. I'm just gonna run. I'm just so excited. Um, run into the canyon. Come on, guys. I'm right behind you. You ever seen a Pegasus before? I have. You do see them in the Caliban. I've never seen one until I did, so it kind of blew my mind. Mr. Smithson, are you home? Kick yuck? Yelpix? You uh, head into the canyon, head up to where you know his door to be. Door is closed. After a few moments, Kikiek does finally open up the door. Tomatins! <laughs> it's very nice to see you. Can hey. we come in? In, in, in. Hey, many Kikiek. visitors, many visitors lately. Uh, Kikiek, this is Gaz. Gaz, <laughs> this is Kikiek. Gaz makes his way in and he says, so this is the home of the great Smithson that you had been talking about. And the right. great Kikiak. And Kikiak's the one that saved oh. us on the boat that time, you Remember know, the swooping in with the thing. mentioned also Kikiak. And Kikiak, the brave Aracopra. Yes. <laughs> right. It was all like with the hi ya and the hoo-ya and the bang and just, it was amazing. Kikiak, strong. Yes, he is. Way of the elements. Wouldn't be here without you, Kikiak. Do you have other visitors, you said? Well, lead on. 
right. young Kiki Yak. Right. As Kiki Yak leads you deeper into the workshop, you do start to hear, you know, the sounds of construction and banging. You hear a no, 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 no! Put that, put that, put that over there! No, no! Seriously, the aerodynamics will be completely thrown off if you put it there. Kiki just <clears throat> opens up the door and Jasper, companions. Jasper, you know, face smeared with oils of various kinds, looks up from where he's working. Oh, Macarin, Poppy, Carla, Anonymous. Tall orc man, hello. Greetings, I am Gaz. Good to meet you, Gaz. Gaz the Great. Jasper Smith. Gaz, Jasper, Jasper, Gaz. Jasper, Jasper. who are you yelling at? The Opix. Pops his head up. Oh, hey. Oh, Jasper, no. You have to respect your elders. Don't yell at this one. And I'm going to go to greet Iopix. He'll grasp your hand and pull you close. And for a good old hug. Right before the hug gets there, I will just put my other hand on his elbow and sort of embrace that. This kind of looks confused for a moment. Okay. <laughs> Yep, We'd have been here sooner, <laughs> but we hit a roadblock and some things happened, and I'll glance over to Poppy and glance back. Like, we met a dragon! Yeah, we met a dragon. I'll let go of his hand and arm. Oh! oh what? Nightmare has returned to this plane. You're kidding. No. We helped him defeat the Mind Eater. He also told us where we could find, uh, I'll kind of look over at Jasper, that old friend we're looking for. The great old friend. Oh no, I filled him in on everything. So, Thundercrack is thought to be in Whistlewind Caverns. Sounds about right. That's a pretty big area out there. Fairly inhospitable if I've got my barons right. Difficult to get to. You think the pillars are bad? Wait until you get into the Whisperwind Caverns. I love those pillars. Young Jasper. There is also news that you might be interested in. Mr. Swinson? Mr. Swinson, sir, this is going to make you feel like it's Gifts of the Princess Day. And I reach into my backpack and I pull out that 10 faucetted geode that we found. As he pulls it out, I say, it's better than Firestone. His eyes get real big as he looks at it, picks it up. I don't know if it works like regular gemstones or not, but just my figuring if it's semi-natural, you might be able to get 10 different crystals out of that. He pulls out one of those, you know, jeweler's monocles and looking at it real close and oh, Master Yopix, this is definitely what she was talking about. This is the real deal right here. We've uh, been working on a little something, something. Oh, we would love to see it. Yeah. And Master Yopix. I wonder how the construction was coming. As you all know, <laughs> I have a long boat, and he pats it. Yeah. Uh, this here, you know, this is proof of concept. I remember uh, you saying that. Week or so ago, Master Yopix here shows up, says that y'all had mentioned me, and that uh, he might have information what could help me with my eventual goals. Of course, I was highly surprised, because how did he know what I was working on? But of course, you know, you, you told him. He also explained that he apparently has done research as well on these ships. Malkrin gives Sonimus a wink. Well, it's just best if y'all could just come see it. Yes, we shall follow you. Yeah. Master Smithson. He takes you, because you guys were, you're in basically like his main work. Right. 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 We've been well, here so before. He takes you out into a larger area. They motion. We've been working on a I say the best analogy is a cutter. So not just a longboat, but something of a little more substance, since from what a Master Yopix has told me, it sounds like y'all gonna need a reliable source of transportation. That's mighty impressive. Wow. How far along does it look? About one more day of work, and uh, well, I say I need to uh, go about refining this fine chunk of crystal. Well, what do you think we could make it half a day and I'll start rolling up my sleeves? But I say with a few more hands, I think we could. Master Smithson, I, I do have another question. The boats, they fly mm -hmm. using the crystals or the dwarven firestone that you had used before. Do they fly on their own? Are they just boats? that fly magically through the crystal or are they specially made 
to fly. My question is, I have this, and I pull out the folding boat, and I say the magic word, and I, it folds out. And I say, could you make this fly as well? Steam and whistles. We have a backup boat. I'm gonna have to see if I could harmonize the magics, but you've got enough sample of crystal here that I can conceivably get, you know, Nova crystals out. And I say, I think we could potentially make all three. Excellent. I have seen no reason why we cannot help you and maybe speed along the process. Tell you what, Master Eopix knows what needs to get finished up. Y'all help him work on that. I'll go get these crystals refined, and then I'll see if I have time enough to uh, make in one thing, as he indicates the ship that they've been working on. Uh, turning this into a work of art, and getting it going. I mean, that's one thing. That's creating the original. This here, pulling up old track and trying to reuse it to place for something new. I gotta make sure that the magics are harmonious and that they don't, you know, explode. Yes, that's exploding would be bad. Yes, so um, that takes a little more time, a little more delicacy. I can do it, but it'll take me a minute. So let me refine this crystal, and then I'll take a look and see what I can do, because this one, see, indicates your boat. This magic's a little uh, fuzzy to me. It feels a little different. It's not dwarven magic. It feels very... Uh, it came from the elves. Yeah, but I say, elven, elven magic, it kind of feels like flowing water, you know? While dwarven magic is firm, solid. So trying to make those two mesh, uh, it's a bit of a challenge. So I will do my very best. Excellent, and I uh, walk over to Eopix, and I say, Lord, Eopix, I, <laughs> I, 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 I thought of us kind of cringes too. <laughs> I, Mokrin thinks it's perfect. The orcs have long talked about you and the other guardians. You yeah. are a creature of myth that we didn't even know still existed. I am honored to be in your presence. And when we were in the temple of Thundercrack and I saw your image, it meant so much to be a part of that. Look, the stuff on Thundercrack's temple, that's all, you know, it's, it's, they didn't get the nose right. <laughs> they got your bad side. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, um, hi. Good, good. Yes, Gaz, Gaz, uh, yes, uh, Yazgash and Mazaga are my mothers, and uh, I remember hearing your stories as I was growing up, and just meeting you in the flesh, and um, it's just an amazing thing, and I am so happy to be here in your presence. How does Eopix look? He it seems to have wild. some yeah. renewed energy. It's more that whole renewed energy of like, hey, new project, let's get it done. Uh, 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 focus, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's focus. He seems to be the kind of person that, if he's got something to do, something to keep his mind occupied, like, he's a doer. He doesn't like to sit around and mope. He's a doer. He doesn't stay in one place very long. So for him, being able to do this thing that helps, that's helping him. He definitely looks... It's weird to see age lines on an elf. Because mm -hmm. he looks like he's aged. In human terms, you know, 20, 30 years since you last saw him. In elven terms, you know, we're talking 300 years. You definitely see the effects of losing the feather on him physically. Lord Alex, I know you're working on some stuff. Stop it with the lords! Oh, sorry. We had a chance to meet Nightmare, the terrible black, like, yeah. alive and well. Yeah? And I'll give you anything. We, we did receive a few gifts. Okay. They didn't come with any provisos, any conditions? He owed us. Okay, cool. He still owes us. Oh, good. Okay. He's in your debt. You're not in his. Okay, good. Yeah. Awesome. Great. <laughs> Even though the dwarves has long lived, my dwarven history of dragons is a little fuzzy sometimes. And I look over at Connor. But he mentioned a name to me, Dreamweaver. Oh, now there's a story. They was, like, connected, weren't they? Fix thieves. From what I know from my time, I think the best word to use, I don't know if mate is the proper word or if lover, but from what I hear, you rarely saw one without the other. 
Walker says, what the? Kind of glances over one shoulder, you know, will lowers his voice just a little bit. The hidden canyon city. We saw a thing and it basically said that like nightmare and then uh, fought the mind eater. And then his beloved dream weaver departed after him. I just figured that was like lost in battle, but I'm thinking maybe he spoke in we a lot. I didn't know if that was royal or if there was something going on. Dragons, they've always been weird like that. From what we could gather, it seems like they're all connected and he taps the side of his head. They seem connected somehow. Some of them, from what we knew, could communicate with one another over great distances. I know that it's it's hard for us to understand, but I guess the best way to think about it is imagine if your arm was cut off, you know? You just lose an important part of yourself. But now imagine, you know, that's your best friend that you've been with forever and ever and ever. The two of you living together, eating together, you know, doing everything together for eons and eons and eons. And then all of a sudden, gone. The connection dropped. Like you and Whirlwind in a way. Kinda, yeah. I mean, Whirlwind and I aren't as intrinsically bound as the dragons are to one another, but I can't imagine if I were to die before Whirlwind or Whirlwind to die before myself, there would be something lost, because if I've lost one of my own senses. Speaking of best friends, Strom says hello. He Strom! Sends his you found him! Good! Yes, he and Beloved are doing as well as they can. Of course, they were struck by Wiley the same way you were, but he is sticking close to the lake, and he helped us go to the mine and Thundercrack's temple, and great help, but I'm sure he would want us to give you his regards Good. and wish you well. When we left him, we was, he was at, with ladies and I at the temple. Good. Had you heard from any of the other guardians? No, and I haven't. I fear to go too far into the west. Already, I feel significantly weaker. But if Orbel is anywhere, she is with the orc tribes and Islay. She's tough. She's a fighter. She would have gone down swinging. Should we be seeking them out? Or should we head straight to see if we can find Thundercrack? If it were me, I would seek out Thundercrack first. I agree. She's fickle and capricious, but she's good for it. Fortunately, I think now that we have talked to Nightmare, we have a much better idea of where Thundercrack might be there. If anyone would know, he would. And so all we need to do is finish this boat and we can travel on. How do you want our help with this? Yes. Really, we're mostly down to, you know, finishing touches and getting everything patent down. And Is there anything these two can do to help you with the crystal? Yeah, I'd be happy to. And I have a surprisingly large knowledge about boats. And I am very big. He I is. can carry things. And great. Greetings and salutations, my friends. I'm Michael Cross. So great to have a moment to talk with you during this mid-show break. First off, I want to invite you all to join us as Patreon members. The money we raise helps us pay for things like music and sound effects you hear on the show, as well as money to go to events and make new fans. When you become a Patreon member, you get our episodes four days early, bonus content, access to our Discord server, and full versions of our roundtable discussions. You'll be joining other fans like Scott Wise, Don Mills, Heath Mormon, and the Lady Kate. So join us right now at patreon.com slash reddirtdnd. Another way to support us is by getting your very own Red Dirt merchandise. You can find things like hats, hoodies, mugs, and t-shirts. Just click on the merch tab at reddirtdnd.com or reddirtrpg.com. Since 2020, the Red Dirt D&D podcast has been close to another Oklahoma actual play Dungeons & Dragons podcast, D20 to Curtain. And me personally, I've had a chance to work on stage with some of the actors on the show. So when you get done with this episode, you should check them out. Hello, fellow D&Ders. My name is Jerome. I'm Jennifer. I'm Jody. And together with our friends Kara, Timothy, and Jared, we are the cast of the D20 to Curtain podcast, where Oklahoma theater geeks and their friends hit record and explore our new addiction to Dungeons & Dragons. We think D&D is more than just a game. 
It helps us tap into the enduring power of storytelling. We combine live gameplay with behind the curtain episodes to share our experiences, insights, habits, discoveries, and passion for D&D with anyone who will listen. We hope D20 to Curtain will make you laugh, cry, maybe even make your experience at your table even more satisfying. Check us out anywhere you listen to podcasts or visit us at d20tocurtain.com or at d 20 to Curtain on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We look forward to having you. All we ask is that you have fun, be kind, and play the role. If you're looking for more content, make sure to check out our YouTube page with Mysteries of Beatrix live every Wednesday. Keys from the Golden Vault from the Red Dirt Outlaws dropping every Tuesday at noon and Plausible Deniability every other Thursday at 7 p.m. So come check it out at youtube.com slash at Red Dirt RPG or search for Red Dirt RPG on YouTube. And we would love to hear from you. Find us on social media at Red Dirt RPG. You can also get in touch with us through our website at reddirtrpg.com. In the meantime, make sure and subscribe to this podcast and leave a comment on your favorite podcatcher so others can find us. All right, I think that's everything I need to tell you. Right now, let's head back to Red Dirt D&D. The ship that Jasper and Eopix have been working on seems to be constructed of reclaimed wood from La Promise. Eopix explains to you all that the wood itself is iron bark. He says this is a magical wood that is harvested from the trees of the ironwood, which is far, far to the northwest. They get their name because they are hard as iron once properly treated. So it keeps it light, but it keeps it protected takes you all better part of the day. After some time, you see Jasper has been working at one of his workstations as he's carefully refined the crystal until you see him holding up and it actually floats wow. softly in his hand. This is a thing of beauty. I ain't never felt magic like this before. Malkern? Yes? You want to do the honors, my boy? Oh, no, Mr. Smith, sir. No, I do not. Um, but thank you very, very much. I... Markran Stone Shaper. Yes. If it weren't for you and your friends, first off, I wouldn't be able to make this because I would never have met Master Yapix. Second of all, you brought this gift to me, boy. I want you to have this honor. You deserve it, my friend. Okay, I'll try my best. Nothing. I believe in you. You can do this. All of those memories of the times that he's messed things up before. Walker carefully walks over, sees the slot, which there it goes in that one, right? Yes, my boy. Okay, and it stops. Does it have a name? Not yet. Does it? What you want to name it, boy? Does it, Walker? You want me to name it? Let me put it this way, boy. This is your ship. I got my longboat. Then may Thundercrack's revenge fly. And you slide the crystal into the port. A contraption looks a bit like an astrolabe. The rings clank up, start to whirl around, and you feel the energy start to flow. The Opix stands at the control module for the moment, his hands resting, pours in a little more arcane juice, starts to vibrate, and lifts up, and he gives a nod. Mokran, get over here. Okay. Let's put her through her paces. Go ahead. Are we outside when this is happening? Or no, is but you do see Jasper and Kikiak kind of run up to an area. Currently, it's just a rock face closed. Activates a panel and doors of the garage open up. And just the optics. Puts his hand on your back and kind of leans in straight on into that sunrise. Alrighty. And I take the rudder-like handle and start to lean it forward just a little bit. That's the ship vibrating, you know, comes up just a little bit. Do we need to be on the boat, DM? You're not on the boat, because you said you don't want to be on the boat. I was there. Do you want to be I on the boat? I was going to be on the boat. You're not on the boat. Do you want to be on the boat? Mock. I always take chances to fly. Mock out the <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't miss this worth of the world. I'm on the You're boat. You're on the boat. So, Connor, Mockrin, and Gaz. This is a cutter. It's not quite as large as Wily shit, but it's big enough to hold you guys, hold your gear, so that way it's not going to be much trouble. But this was built and halfway designed by Eopix. Eopix 
is a adrenaline junkie, so he has ensured that you guys will not lack for speed. And so you're kind of standing there at this control module as he's just got his hand, you know, on your arm. His long hair just trailing backwards in the wind, just <laughs> laughing maniacally as a proper speed junkie would. <laughs> so you're there at the helm. Connor? I'm up at the front of the ship yes. just watching how fast this is going and thinking we might stand a chance. I am actually also standing with Connor. And I look down to Connor and I say, Connor, it's moments like this that you feel like we might actually win this thing. I was just thinking the same thing. You ever think you'd get the chance to be up in one of these? I never knew they really even existed. Me either. (laughs) Until just recently. The realization that maybe we can save the frontier, you and I, is a good feeling for the sons of the Caliban to come together. Yes. We still got a ways to go, but there's a bit more hope in the air around us. I think we've all grown closer to each other. It's an amazing feeling, and I look forward to seeing it through with friends. With friends. Biopix is just kind of giving you all of these tips and pointers. Yes. Lean yourself into the wind. Feel how it goes. Work with it, not against it. I will say Connor will eventually break off and learn a little bit more about how the ship runs as well. We can't just have one person who knows how to play this. <laughs> After a few minutes, Connor, Connor, come back here. Oh, here, yeah. Here, oh. You try here, this oh, right here, hold it, and then I'll swap off to you. You take control. Okay, I got it, and I'll right, take right. a hold of it. Go. Uh, and it kind of like wobbles for a bit before I manage to steady it and I'm like, oh, this is more intuitive than I thought it was going to be. As soon as you two, Connor and Makran, are just working out the controls and figuring how things work and practicing different banks and turns and everything and you just see Eopix as he just kind of goes over to one side of the ship, tangles his hand just into some of the rigging and just leans oh. out as far as he can go feeling that whole wind on his face. Take this up into the clouds. Why are we staying down here close to the ground? You want to do the honors, Mockery? You got it. All right, let's go. Let's, leave this in. let's see this world from a Pegasus perspective. <laughs> and I'll uh, pull it up so we ascend further into the clouds. Whoa. So we ascend above the clouds. Whoa. One of the things that you do notice that's different from Jasper's style of ship. As you're pelted a little bit with like, you know, the rains and stuff, you actually notice there's a small magical barrier. So it seems like while the ships of the Empire, you know, are still built very much on the ideas of the straight up sailing ship, it seems like Jasper is working on a few innovations. You all get a bird's eye or Pegasus's eye view of the Colbound frontier. Oh, I again grab my map. How far from um, Smithson, have we gone? <laughs> and does anything catch our eye? You're up higher. You're getting to see all of these formations and things that you have only seen from the ground before. But as you guys are going, you do coast over the Skyship crash site. Oh, wow. And seeing that from above, you actually see like how great the impact crater really is. Mr. Yes. Albex, does it have a range or a daily power allotment? Do you know anything about the flight crystal? I mean, we can't just run it all night long, can we? It would probably be a good idea to touch down, oh, give it a few hours rest every now and again, just so that you don't burn it out. But the magic of the flight crystals, I'm a little more fuzzy on. Uh, sure. Jasper, again, you know, may have in his refinement. I mean, it's a fresh crystal. If we take care of it, if we don't burn it out, it is indefinite for the most part? To my knowledge, yes. Mokrin and Connor, you had said that you had crashed the enemy ship as high up as we could go. Could we, on the way to go see Thundercrack, maybe pass by the Mesa? Or do you worry that we might be spotted? Not going in, but just going over at this height. It might take us about a day to get to the Mesa, and if we could fly high enough, maybe we could keep out of their view. But it might be a good idea to see where they might be. So I definitely think I did some damage to their ship, but it was such a chaotic thing that happened that like I didn't really see it fall. Definitely did something that stalled them, but the more we can avoid where we last saw them, the more we potentially have an element of surprise over them for them not finding out that we have one of these. 
then going straight to the Thundercrack. Whistlewind Caverns. Mm-hmm. Yes, that would be my opinion of our better strategy. Yes, my, my only concern is that we then would not know where they are. If there was some way to find out. We might could see if Poppy has something that might could find them. Yes. Or you would mentioned the crystal. Do you think you might still be in contact with it? I'll pass off the controls to Mokrin to pilot. Yeah, and I got it. I'll reach down deep inside me and feel, am I still connected to this crystal? The connection is fading just because of how much time you've spent away from it. It's still there. Just a sliver. It's faint, but I still feel that connection to it. Could you go to it? Roll me percentile. Okay. 13. With as long as it's been and with everything that's happened, with you trying to like reach out to it and sense it, it's just not quite clicking Mm -hmm. as to where is it. Okay. The only sensation you get is just far. Yeah. Okay. But not like a direction. Okay. I'll shake my head to Gaz. No, but... I think Poppy has something for it. It's not a part of anything that I know how to do, but locate where at least the crystal is. Yes. I think finding some kind of information about where they are right now, if they have repaired the ship and are heading into that area that they were going to be looking, or are maybe still stuck in the Mesa repairing the ship, it would be good to know, always know where your enemy is. Yeah. Why don't we head back? Have you felt like you have enough... Understanding of the controls to... Yeah, I think I'm good. Mokrin? Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredibly intuitive, like Connor said. I just want to say that I am very proud of the two of you. Thanks. And what you two have done for the Caliban will not be forgotten. Because we wouldn't have made it, especially from the Mine Eater, if it weren't for your bravery. I thank you, young Mokrin. But let's head back. Uh, we need to talk to young Zonimus and Poppy about a plan now that we are reaching the next step in our journey. You ready, Mr. Yopix? Let's do it. All right. The challenge is always landing. Bank it hard and then just come dropping down out of the clouds. Yopix kind of like makes sure to like have his hand on the controls with you. 100%. Yeah. So that way you can see what he's doing and get a sense for what it feels like. You begin your descent until very gently skimming over top the sands, slowly coming to a stop inside of Smithson's garage. Papa, I understand. I mean, you like the flying thing now. That's, it's amazing. I'm sitting on Smithson's couch, wrapped up in a blankie with a cup of tea, and my hair's damp, and I just look very clean and pleased. <laughs> yes, it takes a while to get your hair legs, but once you do, it is an amazing feeling. Is all of us around? He's taking a nap, bless his heart. All right. It's all of us. Hmm. We have returned okay. from our flight. Okay. Hey, how was it? It was good. It was great. Yeah. Kaz had an idea about maybe doing a little bit of surveillance. My concern <laughs> is that we do not know the actual whereabouts of Wiley or his compatriots. And it would be best, I think, if we actually knew where they were at this moment. Are they still in the Mesa? Are they on their way to that area that they were looking for? Are you wanting to use the ship for this? No. Well, I had thought about it, but young Connor has some trepidation about actually getting anywhere near the Mesa. And I I do share that as well. But if there are a way we could spy on them without their knowledge. So, She Who Weeps can help us with that. However, we need something I don't have. So we might ask Smithson or Eopix, but I need a crystal ball, a fancy mirror. A Some way to actually yes. look into... Right, right, yes. The Eopix. Hmm. Mr. Smithson, anything that you gentlemen might have that... Would, would be used to scry some crystal ball or mirror. Of significant wealth. Wait, Smithson, what about that one pot? 
Oh yeah, I was about to say, go, go, you found that, go get it. Beopix goes back into the workshop and you hear like some crashing <laughs> stuff being thrown around. And then he comes back with this kind of shallow basin that he sits down, crosses his legs. It's this nice silver carved basin. He sits down right in front of you. That's cancer, pour it in. Oh, okay, and I will do so. You pour in water from your water skin. My enchanted fancy water skin. Yeah. It creates a smooth, placid surface, quite mirror-like, that you can stare into to do your scrying. Zonimus, darling, I'm gonna need your help, and it may not be pleasant. Okay. <laughs> do you have any just rattling around in your bag somewhere? Anything that may have belonged to Wiley? Help us out. I have a backup plan if you don't, but... Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. I have one thing. I'll reach deep, deep into this bag and pull out a box of matches that has one match left in it. That's wonderful. Now, just you just hold on to that. You just put that between your hands, and then I'm going to put my hands on top of your hands, and we're going to think about Wiley, and we're going to see if we can't see him. Okay? All right. You sit there concentrating on Wiley. Your hands over Zonimus's, and then the water begins to ripple out as if a single drop was forced into the center, causing the ripples to shockwave out. And the water turns cloudy, and then you begin to see shapes and images. A skyship, Wiley standing at the bow, looking out to the horizon, below and around, nothing a familiar look to you. You see a great field of black sand. Fortunato comes to stand next to Wiley. The obsidian wastes, your highness. The territory once most strongly controlled by Lord Cimarron. Here is where we will begin to reforge the empire. And soon, soon we will have the bottle back in our grasp. Red Dirt D&D, Tales from the Caliban Frontier, is Ash King as our Dungeon Master, Brooke Bullock as Mokran Stone Shaper, Johnny Payne as Zonimus Dinar, Kiri Hester as Poppy Teeley, Connor Chenold as Connor the Cobalt, and I'm Michael Cross as Gaz. Special thanks to our Silver Star Paladin patron, Shenanigans Unplugged. Our theme music was created by the Cinemagician PJ Castillo. Our incidental music comes from Jeffrey McBride. Our sound effects and additional music, courtesy of TabletopAudio.com, Sirenscape, and Monument Studios. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and at RedDirtDnd.com. We here at Red Dirt D&D could really use your help in getting the word about us. If you like what you've heard, make sure and subscribe, rate us, and leave a comment. Also, tell your friends about Red Dirt D&D. You can also support the show at patreon.com slash reddirtdnd. We have several giving levels to help us grow up big and strong. Join us next time as we go deeper into the Caliban frontier. Yapix is here. Oh, is he? I, I mean, like, I hope so. I mean, I hope he... Oh, crap! <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot of explaining to do. Something else we have obtained. I elbow Mokrin in the ribs. <laughs> Brooke is drawing a blank. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a whole point of this. <laughs> a whole reason. <laughs> a whole reason. Go back and listen to the past mind. dozen episodes. You were like, okay, we got to get back to Jeff. Because we got him flickers. Oh, this is why we have a wiki. This is, your this is why we have a wiki. Thank this is you, when Dune. you get to be the star of the show and give the man what he wants. Y'all are talking about stuff I'm like the main reason we are here. Yes, we shall follow you. Yeah. Master Smithson. Did you make hoverboards? <laughs> <laughs> How about colorful Vespas that we can Stop all ride? Now. <laughs> Stop now. <laughs> Stop. Uh, how far along does it look? Does it look like it's sea ready? 
Sky ready. <laughs> couldn't find the Maybe. word. I couldn't find the word. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's good that it happened before, you know, I just croaked. So, hey, it's all good. Let's go. Yeah. Let's, let's, oh. We got stuff to do. Can I get your autograph? No, I'm sorry. <laughs> Can I get you a towel? <laughs> so I would suggest a montage. <laughs> <laughs> we built this skyship on rock and roll. Built this skyship. <laughs> You're the best. Around. Around. <laughs> the ones that are gonna bring you down. down. Mom the rest. falls off a ladder. It's hilarious. They all have a good laugh about it. Connor gets paint on his nose. Zonimus <laughs> and Poppy get in a paint fight and then kiss. Oh. <laughs> the great montage. <laughs> Gaz is over there looking at the drawing plans. Stick figure, boom. <laughs> right, I then. made new drawing plans. <laughs> stick These are better. <laughs> stick figures on a really stick figure boat. And then it has like little wings sticking out. Yeah. These are the flying parts. <laughs> and little wing, you know, wind, wind <laughs> blinds. Wind going going. In the back are like two lines sticking out. That's where the crystals are. <laughs> <laughs> this is your moment. That's right. World you build. Have to world, world build. build. <laughs> it's a lot of pressure. What is, it, yeah, see? what is the name of our ship? Bodie McBoat. <laughs> Bodie Bodie no, no, no. Bodie McBoat. <laughs> Floaty McBoat. <laughs> Eopix is a adrenaline junkie, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> you put a turbo on it. Yeah. So he said hit that NOS button. Yeah. <laughs> Kick the hydros, kid. <laughs> Connor? Are you on the prow of the ship like yeah. Titanic style? Well, I was going to say, I am a holding Connor yeah. up at the very front with his arms out. I'm flying, Gas. I'm flying. My, my tiny little wings are just like trying to keep up with the Like when you wind. pick up a dog and they keep paddling as if yeah. they're swimming, but they're not swimming. I am actually also standing with Connor, and my hair is just absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> Flying behind me. It's that slow mo, like. It is. Fabio moment. It's a very yeah. Fabio moment. Do a barrel roll! <laughs> <laughs> Try spinning, that's a good trick. Mockrin banks it around, and you see Connor's like, I'm used to this. across the sand, <laughs> I kicking up dirt. We trained. Yes. We trained. <laughs> And just as important, I think that Gaz should go downstairs and build a sill. <laughs> <laughs> My man. Man, some moonshine. <laughs> Such as the protective bubble. Nice. We've got shields. <laughs> I can fly higher than an eagle. I can see my house from here. <laughs> We are quite powerful, if I do say so myself. It's rather humbling, but I'm not good at being humble. So, <laughs> I've only got a 10 wisdom. Would you like to try? <laughs> what the hell? The Yopix just kind of gets up and goes. I like them being like buddies. It's very cute. <laughs> it, it, it is like, it's a sitcom. Wait, it's, yeah, it's the odd couple. <laughs> say. A dwarf uh, and an elf, too. That's just beautiful. <laughs> With an Aarakocra. <laughs> <laughs> Three's company. Oh, please, somebody, you've got Come to make this a sitcom. <laughs> We've been waiting for you.